Hey folks, welcome back to Hong Kong. Today we're testing out the new 28 to 400 Nikon Z lens. Interesting timing actually. I just put live a video looking at Canon's 200 to 800. Interesting, massive variable aperture just like this guy. But we got a lot of comments from people saying maybe too big and longer than they require. And a few specifically saying 400 is as long as they would want. The day after I publish that, I get hands-on with a new variable aperture zoom lens, this time a big travel zoom. So you can see it really does zoom out quite a lot. We've had these kind of lenses for some time in both DX and full frame. There was like an 18 to 200, I think a 28 to 300, but I can't remember one that was quite this wide, 28 all the way through to 400. It is variable aperture f4 to f8. We'll see where those transitions happen. And we know the Z cameras can focus fine all the way through to f8. So we're going to compare this one to the 24 to 200 on the Z8 at the bird market here and with Honey who's joining us shortly. So apparently, oh look at your big fluffy afro. Apparently this can focus right down to two centimeters. Can we try? Can we try? Hello. <laughs> Shooting with the lenses side by side, there was obvious differences between them, including the balance, the size and weight. But generally speaking, if it was decent light, they both focus quite well. At 400 mil, I can focus pretty dang close. But at 28, if I don't get bitten, it's ridiculously close. But the reproduction ratio is not that big. You gonna bite my hood? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Biting my hood, aren't you? That's okay. It's not mine, you can. Look at this magician over here. Wow. What's his name? I'm a I'm a now the 28 to 400 I'm testing is pre-production. It has 21 elements in 15 groups, including four ED and three aspherical elements. It's got a nine bladed rounded aperture. It's f4 to 22 on the wide end and f8 to 45 on the telephoto end. And this guy has a close focusing distance of 20 centimeters at 28 mil. It weighs in at around 725 grams, which makes it heavier than the 24 to 120, 24 to 200, and even the 14 to 24, but about 10% lighter than the 24 to 70 f2.8 Z lens. Taking a look at the progression of the aperture, you'll note it starts to climb really quickly. By 35 mil, we're already at f4.2. By 50 mil, 5.3. By 70 mil, f6. 105, 6.3. And we actually hit f8 at 190 mil. It looks like it's past 200, but I did some test shots and it crosses over at 190 mm. Whereas the 24 to 200, by 35 mil we hit 4.8, 50 mil 5.6, 70 mil f6, 105 is 6.3, and it stays there throughout. Thank you. 
Right beside the trash, cinematic, cinematic. Now, if you're a Nikon Z shooter, folks, check out my expert setup guide. It takes you through the entire range, how to set them up out of the box, what every single physical control on each camera does, as well as a complete menu deep dive and an overview of all of the new firmware updates and new models that have been added. Check it out, full details are below. Stay, stay, stay. So I don't know what to think of this guy exactly. Nikon have a really well built out long lens zoom range already for Z mount and a standard zoom range. And this kind of covers both of them. 24 to 70, 24 to 120, 24 to 200, 70 to 180, 70 to 200, 180 to 600, 100 to 400, 400, 45, 600 PF, 400 and 600 prime, like 2.8 and F4s as well and I own a couple of them already, so this isn't really one for me, but what do you guys think? More portability, bigger zoom range, still gets you to 400 mil. Of course, it's not gonna be like the 4.5 or the 2.8 in terms of the kind of quality you're getting from it. But I guess if you're comparing it to the 24 to 200, twice as long on the long end. And I'd be really interested to hear, is this a lens that you would consider or who do you think this range is really suited to? Next up, we're going to go shoot with Honey and see what we can do in terms of portraits with this range. And then this lady. Wow, this is a spa. Hi, honey. Hi. <laughs> okay, I give up. So next I wanted, thank you for coming, first of all. Next I wanted to test this guy on the street. I mean, it's kind of obvious, right? It's such a long focal length, but it really does give you a huge range of options in terms of your framing. So I thought let's walk around the markets and see what we can do in terms of including foreground, getting rid of all the distractions. We might find a wet market and just see what we can, what this kind of focal length opens up for us. Activation. Versatility. I think that's the main key word for today's testing. Um, thank you to Nikon Hong Kong for getting me hands-on access to this one early to try for you guys. Um, I think this is a lens that will be mostly popular with you know people wanting an all-in-one travel lens. So I think the Bird Street and then the market were good places to test it. Just note with that variable aperture that gets to f8 so quickly 
you do have to think about your ISO and shutter speed and I was rarely down at my base ISO even shooting you know the birds in hard light I was regularly up at like f400 450 and above and in fact a lot of the time I was actually shooting 1600 to 6400 and I had to go sometimes all the way up to like 12,800 and even 16,000 to get shots when my subjects were in you know poorly lit areas Taking a look at the images, they're good. Uh, to be honest though, when it lands, it's very good. They are, however, a lower strike rate than with some of the higher end lenses, which of course you would expect. But shooting the birds, for example, I would get one or two that were a little soft and then one that nailed. So my strike rate was a little down. So look, 28 to 400 is clearly extremely versatile and it's just gonna come down to that if that's what you need. Shooting the two of them side by side, I do think that the 24 to 200 is going to suit more people. Wider on the long end, 200 is still quite long for an all-in-one travel lens. It's that much smaller, lighter, easier to handhold. The image quality is probably a little bit better than the 28 to 400, but getting to 400 mil is pretty remarkable, to be honest. I would say if 400 mil and portable and great image quality is your priority. The 400 f4.5 is really hard to beat, but if you want it all in one lens, you're willing to accept the aperture trade-off and you know the mid-range image quality, then this is a versatile lens and that's the one for you. Just be aware of the trade-offs that it comes with. And also I would point out that the 28 to 400 is quite front heavy, especially when zoomed out, all of that glass seems to move with the front elements. So you wanna have you know, a decent hold of your camera. It's going to start to tip forward. Let me know your thoughts. Who do you think this camera is for? Is it one that you're interested in? Do check out the expert setup guide. Full details on that one are below.